I mean, look at this table. <laughs> this sweaty fruit orgy <laughs> is available to us. Good stuff is out there. Good stuff is out there. Good stuff is out there, but you just have to hunt for it. Mm -hmm. You have to like want to find it. Mm -hmm. You have to first off. You have to know that it's possible. I didn't know. I suspected. The thing about um, fruit collecting is that there's no end. And if you have friends overseas and they'd give me a call tomorrow, I'm on the plane to France. <laughs> Before long, it became an obsession, and uh, I was no longer a normal person. It blossomed into a full-time case of insanity. Oh, man. You know, when I started out in this whole thing, I was just like, I'm a filmmaker. I love to eat. I like food. I'm going to, you know, I've just come off this movie called China Heavyweight, which was a film that actually came out at the same time as Food Hunters, but it's trying to have you, it was, you know, human drama, boxing, blood, sweat, and tear kind of movie. And I didn't want to deal with that. I wanted something happy and inspiring. And, and Adam and I both discovered, I think, that fruit is inspiring. It's like, they're sculptural and they're beautiful. And it was like, uh, like this, this sort of idea that using fruit as a source of imagination, where could we take it? Where could I take it as a filmmaker? The fruit world is a world of, it's the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the stock market, <laughs> it was the fruit market. It was the fruit market. Okay. It's where people were executed publicly. It was where justice was, there, was wow, dealt out. Exactly. Um, Shall we go to this one here? Yeah, let's do it. The key thing about when you're approaching a documentary film is to find, you need to find the right subjects. You need to find characters. And in documentary, I think a lot of the terminology we use uh, is similar to feature filmmaking. Uh, we're casting, you know, we're looking for characters, we're looking for storylines and narrative arcs. It was a long process of, of researching the movie. In fact, uh, it took about two years. One of those was with the Canadian Film Center. We had a lot of advisors come in to talk to us, uh, filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, bin vendors, people like this would come in and and uh, we would be able to, you know, rap about the idea of what we wanted to make. But for me, it was always a little bit sprawling and difficult. Aside from the pressure of having to adapt a book that a friend of yours wrote and do it justice, there was also the challenge of trying to, you know, siphon down all the content of this world of fruit, which is essentially like making a movie about nature. I did feel that I needed to try to make something that would stand alone and with your book. And that was difficult. I know that when I was making up the Yangtze, it was much more of a kind of a soul-searching journey, and I spent all my time along that river, and there was time to think about things and try different things, but this one we had to really hone in on the characters we were following, and, and it, was, uh, it was amazing to have learned a lot. Filmmaking is all about collaboration, and it's not fair to say like, oh, and then I have this idea to do this, using that using the, the I statement is difficult, I think, when you're making a film because it's a highly collaborative. From the inception to the post-production, there's like a thousand people involved. And you lean on them for their creative input. And Adam as well, during the adaptation process, he was integral in consulting and helping us figure out uh, ways to tell the story. Best fruit I ever ate. You know, people ask that question, like, what's yeah. your favorite fruit? It's such a rookie question, what's your favorite yeah, fruit? Yeah, it is a rookie question. It's not about the favorite fruit. That's what happens when we get together. Yeah, you get fruit and, you know, people that love fruit together, and it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be unforgettable. Shall we? Yeah. Structurally, as a documentary filmmaker, for me it's based on research and a journalistic kind of approach. And then, as eventually, when you've got the cameras rolling and you're going to production, you, you let this stuff go and you kind of go with what you have in front of you. And that is that immediate interaction with your characters. Throw caution to the wind and just let things and you know organically happen because they want to happen. Oh my god. Mm. Oh my mm. god. The beautiful sculpture. Fruit hunters have arrived. Oh, my dad's here. <laughs> oh, yes, perfect. <laughs> Let's get him in on this. Here. How are you? Very well. Have you had a durian before? No. All right, well, the perfect timing. That's opening right up. Oh, my God. It's Straight right. It, it is really right. Oh, it's right. Smell that funk? That smell that jungle, jungle funk? It's got jungle funk in it. One of the challenges of trying to adapt Adam's book was that he did so vividly and eloquently describe the flavor of fruit. I think many people were concerned, would it translate? You know, when people are eating fruit, would we be able to get what it means to the intricacies of, of the flavor of something? Mm. Wow! Mm. 
It's what like think? fried ice cream or something. You know? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's got a fried taste. Isn't it funky? Yeah. It is amazing. It's, amazing. it's genius. And it's so soft. It's so. Uh, it's custardy. Wow, it's like custard. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I follow the advice of a lot of people who try to adapt something. Is that it's dangerous to take that original source and try to copy it. It's safer and probably more creative to try to avoid that altogether and to come up with something altogether new. For documentary, it's different too. I mean, what really had to ground it was real people and stakes. And I think that we found that with Juan in Honduras, who's been trying for 20 years or so to find a replacement to the Cavendish banana, which is the table banana that you find all over the world, which is threatened by extinction because of a disease. And that is the ultimate horror story of where we're going right now with fruit. That we've you know, gotten so good at making it perfect that now it's a susceptible to disease and we may not have it anymore. And so finding that threat, that element that, uh, that it actually exists was, uh, I think, different from the book, but you know, integral to the storyline of, of the movie. Fruit is all about you know, this kind of thing, this platter of unusual uh, tastiness. Uh, that you can't find anywhere else. Like there, there's a problem where uh, I think at the source of it all, we're wired to be fruit hunters. And I think maybe something we do in the movie and in, in your book is try to find that reconnection, to be able to open up that locked away, innate connection that we have with appreciating fruit. May the fruit be with you. Always.